Welcome to Redeeming the Time with Carol Marie. Redeeming the Time is a series of purpose-filled insights for you to redeem God's time with fresh revelation from the Lord. Stay tuned for today's message. Welcome to Redeeming the Time. Say, yes. He's my Redeemer. He's my Redeemer. Yeah, and He knows how to redeem my time. He knows how to redeem my time. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Yes. And when the Redeemer redeems our time, a lot of times it's even better than if it hadn't had to be redeemed. Amen. <laughs> he knows how to make lemon meringue cheesecake yes. Amen. better than the Cheesecake Factory out of our lemons. That's right. I used to just think that he made lemonade out of my lemons, but uh, he makes lemon meringue cheesecake. Oh my gosh. Mm -mm. So we are in, we're finishing up the month of Elul, and we are in a month where the flood began, Noah's flood, and a year later it ended. It's a month of cleansing. It's a month of start getting ready for a new beginning. See, I'm ready for a new beginning. I'm ready for a new beginning. Yeah. It's time for God to do something new in our lives. Yes, yes. And, and a lot of us are saying, yes, God, I want change. I want something new. I'm ready for new. But you know what? We end up kicking and screaming and dragging our feet because we don't like change. <laughs> Even though we want things to change, we end up not wanting it to change. You know, we've got the black heel marks around the mountain <laughs> where we drag our feet. <laughs> But you know what? God wants to do something special for us. And this is a month to prepare for that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. See, that's why we study the Hebraic months and the Hebraic uh, feasts. Because we want to align with God's timetable. Yes. And if we understand what's going on in the atmosphere, we're not caught unaware. You know, we're going, oh, okay, this is what's going on. All right. Mm -mm. We're not going not gonna to worry about that one. It also was on the first of Elul, isn't this interesting, that, the, that Noah sent out the raven from the ark. Mm. And we studied last week that the raven is a scavenger. You know, that he, he preys on the weak and the wounded. Before he kills something, he, he plucks their eyes out so they can't see before he kills them. Does that sound like the enemy, huh? Mm -hmm. So, the same month that this... Um, Muslim holiday was set into place was the day that the raven was sent out. Okay. But God has a plan. Say God has a plan. God has a plan. Okay. Uh, the Lord had Noah send out the dove, didn't he? Yes. And he went over and he hovered over the land and he, uh, and he didn't find a resting place. So then he came back to the ark and Noah brought him into the ark. Right? And then he sent him out a second time a week later. Guess what happened? He sent out the dove the second time. This time he got an olive branch and he brought it into the ark. This is a time for us to grab hold of shalom. Grab hold of the peace of God. It's time for Holy Spirit to connect our hearts even greater with Israel. You know the olive branch represents Israel. The dove represents Holy Spirit. It's time for us to connect. Okay? Now, September 16th, which will be a little 25, is the what is considered the first day of creation. That's when creation began, not when man was created. And so, the first day of creation, so it's a, it's a time of new beginnings. Say new beginnings. New beginnings. So, the, the dove was sent out the third time, and this time he didn't return. He just stayed moving over the land. Okay? So, what we're doing is we, we are aligning with God's timetable. But be aware, but we're talking about uh, being stirred up to awaken. And this is a time... That we're, we're getting ready for God to do something new in us. Okay, it's a time of preparation. Today I'm talking to you about the power of preparation. Okay, so Noah obviously had to be prepared, didn't he? Before he went into the ark. We saw ours. They say it was about 75 years of preparation before they entered the ark. 
Now, some scholars want to say 120 years, but it was talking about when 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 God said that he, that He wasn't going to tarry long with mankind, and that um, and they had 120 years. That was a, uh, a, like a timetable for the the wickedness of man that was there, and so. Um, when you do the math and the ages of Noah's sons and them being married and what was taking place, most of them talk about about 75 years on, on preparation. So whether it's 75 years or 100 years, you know what? He was prepared, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. You know, he didn't just say, okay, and call all the animals and, and then decide to build the ark. No, there was, there was a plan in place. Yeah. He, he, he was getting prepared. And he was wanting to prepare a habitation and a place of safety, not only for the animals, but for his household. You know, we talked about when the, when the dove went over and, and, and couldn't find a resting place, and then he came back to the ark, and Noah brought him in. We need to know how to come into the ark and know how to come into that habitation so that we are in a resting place with him, don't we? Yes. We need to align with God's timetable. It wasn't time for the dove to stay out there, was it? Uh -uh. See, the raven could stay out there because it was eaten on all the dead stuff that was floating around. But the dove eats grain. We, we found out, I forgot, was it 20,000 seeds a day or something like that? I mean, wow. they eat a lot of seeds. Wow. Yeah, there wasn't a bunch of seeds available right then. <laughs> so the dove came back into the resting place. We need to know how to enter the ark, how to get into the habitation, how to spend time in his presence. Amen. So that girls were, and gentlemen, we're going to have to guard our hearts so that we can stay in that place of shalom. Amen. I mean, just today, I, I heard stuff coming out of my mouth that shouldn't have. You know, irritation is junk, and I'm thinking, whoa, where did that come from? You know what? It, it, I wasn't cussing, I was just rude. <laughs> Which is as bad. Mm -hmm. You know what? There's stuff going on in the atmosphere. Now, it doesn't give an excuse for us to act ugly, mm -hmm. but let me tell you, it's, it, we need to understand what's going on. There's a lot of stuff going on, and you're, we're going to have to increase our prayer time. We're going to have to increase. Uh, we're going to have to guard ourselves so that we know how to enter into His shalom and stay into that yes. shalom. Amen. Amen. We got to get into the ark, Amen. and sometimes we've got to go out and get some peace and bring it into the ark. I bet you those animals were crazy. Oh, My yeah. goodness. Oh, yeah. One of those verses, driving those animals crazy, crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know, we think this is a nice little fun story. No. Oh, you know, elephants and kangaroosies. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? Those kangaroosies were not happy. You know, can you imagine being tossed about? You know? How about being a year with your relatives cooped up into an ark? <laughs> a year in an ark, and, you, and, and even though God's given you a promise that you're going to make it through, but you know what? It doesn't feel like you're going to make it through. And the animals are, are and all this stuff going on. <laughs> You know? And then the waning. Once the storm stops, and then there's the waiting. And the waiting. Yeah. And the waiting. And the waiting. Did I say waiting? There's a lot of waiting. You know, the water has to recede. There's a lot of turmoil. Now depression could come in. They probably didn't have a lot of... For breeze, is that the stuff that you spray? I mean, there's a lot of animals in there. That must get stinketh. Yeah. You waited and waited and waited, and you want to get out of that ark. I remember a snowstorm in the desert, which did not happen very often, and I happened to be babysitting my two uh, nieces, and so I had 
Sam was the youngest, a year older was his, his cousin, and then there was Starley, and then they, uh, a year older than her was her um, older cousin. And here, we, we, when it snowed, I mean, we were out there making snowmen, and we were playing, and we were having fun. Then we'd come in, and then we'd have to get all those wet clothes off and hang them by the fire and, and then and get dry again. And, of course, as soon as they got dry, they wanted to go back into the snow. And so, you know, that was fun for the first day. <laughs> but after a week, because everybody was snowed in, nobody, I couldn't send anybody home. We were all snowed in. Now, they were having a great time. But, oh, my. I was going, ah. <laughs> Sometimes the waiting can get to you. Now I look back at it and I think that was such a precious time. But when you're in the middle of it, sometimes it isn't so precious. Okay? So, and thankfully, my nieces are perfect too. You know, I've got this perfect family, so we did good. Look at Exodus 15 too. It says, The Lord is my strength and song. He is become my salvation. See, He's become my salvation. He's become my salvation. See, it's a declaration, isn't it? Yeah. You know, that means we weren't really convinced of that right away. <laughs> He's become my salvation. Right? He is my God, and I will prepare him a habitation. Yes. Sometimes we're the ark. Mm -hmm. We're the ark for the Holy Spirit to come in. Yes. Woo! Yeah. It's time for him to bring that peace in this ark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, we're going to prepare a habitation for him. The more important the situation is, the more preparation needs to be done, right? I mean, look at a wedding. Oh my goodness, some people start years in advance, getting everything ready, wanting everything perfect. When Starley got married, she married a Christian rock star musician. So she was married in white leather. <laughs> and he had a leather tuxedo. <laughs> and the band played, Here Comes the Bride, all in with drums and everything. And the groomsmen had leather trench coats. <laughs> and the bridesmaids had leather skirts with, with angora sweaters with feathers on their shoulders. Oh yeah, it was a great wedding. Yeah. Some people go for years preparing, preparing, preparing. The more important the situation, the more preparation we tend to put into it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, look at Queen Esther. Esther prepared a year before she even went before the king the first time, didn't she? Yes. They, they, it wasn't just having beauty treatments <laughs> and oils and perfumes and all this. It was protocol. It was learning everything that was needed to be learned. Because they were all chosen to be a part of the king's, either the con concubines or to be a part, uh, chosen as the queen. So they were all learning protocol. They were all learning everything that they needed to learn. Okay, so then when she found out what Haman had set in place and that the, the, her nation, the Jewish nation, was all at, at a place where they could have been all killed off, she didn't just go running into the king. Again, she, there was a time of prayer and fasting. There was a time of preparation. And then she heard from God what was needed to be done. And then she did what he showed her to do. She didn't just do something flippantly. The more important the situation, the more preparation we need. Let me tell you, the flip side of that, the more important the situation, the more attack many times is there. Because even though Satan is not all-knowing, he's not God, he's a fallen angel, but he knows how to read the times. So we need to know how to read the times too. And he can tell if there's anointing on somebody. Mm -hmm. He can tell what's being put into place. He's a spirit being. He sees what's happening in the spirit. So we need to listen to Holy Spirit, don't we? Amen. Amen. We need to. He's smarter, isn't he? He's God. 
Right. For goodness sake, let's quit giving the devil so much credit. That's right. Quit agreeing with darkness, agree with light. Right. Okay, so Esther didn't just rush in there. She, she knew that there was darkness coming against light. Right. So it, we need, she needed a strategy that was above it all. Because the king had already set a decree, hadn't he? He'd already set some things into motion, hadn't he? So he couldn't just say, well, no, I changed my mind. No, he's already got his stamp on it. Mm -hmm. He's already a seal on it. So she needed to have an answer that was higher. She needed an answer that was higher than what was already set in place. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times that's what's happening here. Maybe somebody in your family has set something in motion and you're interceding for them. But you know what? You need a higher law mm -hmm. to counteract what's already been set in motion. And the only way that happens is us getting into that habitation with Him, yeah. listening to God and finding out what He yeah. would have. Right? Yeah. Right. He's smarter. Say, He's smarter. He's smarter. Okay. Then when she went before the king and and then she invited him for dinner she didn't just order fish sticks or hot dogs <laughs> let's have a barbecue no it was elegant it was elegant not just was the food prepared per perfectly but the way everything was staged remember that the first chapter it it tells us about how the king likes flair how he likes parties. Yeah. And the first queen um, embarrassed him in front of everybody and turned him down. Mm -hmm. So isn't that just like the Redeemer? He likes to, he gives us opportunity for do-overs. Mm -hmm. So Esther gets in place and she she gives him two parties. <laughs> she Two dinners where she honors him. But she did it God's way. This is a time, guys. There's a lot of stuff going on in the atmosphere. We've got to listen to God, and we've got to do it His way. And you might be in a situation that seems impossible. It may seem like, you know what? I don't know how, how to change this. I don't know how. You know what? He's got a higher law, and He will show you. He will show you what to do and how to do it. You know, I've shared with you that uh, when, when my son was going through a time where he was in, in rebellion against the Lord and in our family. And, um, and I said, Lord, I need a rhema word to stand on for him. So I started going through all the scriptures that had to do with children and their parents and the generational blessings that belong to us. And I saw the one about honor your father and your mother and all will be well with you and you'll have a long life. Well, that was not the one I needed. <laughs> he wasn't honoring his father and mother. So I had nothing to stand on. You follow me? Yeah. So you, I said, Lord, I need something I can stand on. Give me something that I can agree with heaven on. And then he gave me Acts 16.31. That if I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and I was saved, you know, I would receive salvation and my household. So the condition of that promise was if I believed. I could do that. Yeah. I said, yes, I can believe. I can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. And I am saved, delivered, set free, and my household. So I stood on that one. And, and God worked in my family's life. Yes. And Sam is serving God now. But you know what? You find out, you've got to find something that you can agree with. And you see what's going on, and then you ask God for a higher law. I love this quote. Preparation saves energy and time. It's been said for every minute you spend planning or preparing, it saves you 10 minutes in the execution. Mm -hmm. That's a thousand percent return on your energy and time. Hallelujah. Woo! That's better than Geritol. <laughs> you want return on your energy and time? We spend time with Him. The best planning, the best preparation is spending time with Him. And, and saying, all right, Lord, what do you think of this? Lift, lift up each thing. What do you think of this? Like Leanne lifted up her granddaughter. Okay, this is what the doctors say. What, what do you say, Lord? And He gave her direction, and she got a miracle. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. That's what you're doing, huh, Jeannie? Okay, this is what the doctors say, but what do you say, God? I'm going to agree with heaven. Amen. That's what, that's what I'm going to do. That's right. Hallelujah. Right? That's what you're doing, Patty. You're saying, okay, this doesn't feel good right now. But what do you say, God? You say you're my husband. You say that you'll take care of me. You'll never leave me. All right. See, we have a choice, don't we? We have a choice. Who are we going to agree with? He set before us life and death, blessing and curses. And then he says, you choose. He's talking about choose this day who you're going to serve. Choose. Are you going to choose blessing? Huh? Yeah. 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 But how do we choose? With our mouth and our actions. You know? If we get a bad report, we know, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I was working at the Widow's Ministry Center, and uh, a gal was on duty. We, we had 24 security, and then I also was helping out. And we got a phone call, and the phone call was this couple that used to, would come over to the Widow's Center, and the couple was so precious, they would always help the widows. And they were, you know, if they needed shelves hung or if they needed somebody taken to the store or whatever, they were always being helpful. And so the call had gotten that the man had had a stroke and that he, was, that he couldn't move and they didn't expect him to live. And, you know, he was in a state of a coma and all of this stuff. And, and so the gal that was on duty got the call she starts, she's got a mercy heart. So she's, oh, no, and she's crying and carrying on. And, oh, my gosh, and she's telling me about it, and they're on the phone, and I'm going, this is not what's needed right now. I said, let me have the phone, you know. You know? And, I, and, and then the Lord gave me the scripture, Deuteronomy 14, 29. It says that when you bless the widow, all the works of your hands are blessed. And that, and that, that included your health, Jeannie. That included your health and your life. All the works of your hands represent who you are. Amen. And I said, and that just rose up out of me. I said, you have blessed the widow, and all the works of your hands are blessed. I said, I said, your husband has blessed the widow. All the works of his hands are blessed. That includes his life, his health. I speak life in Jesus' yes. name. Amen. And the gal that was with me, I could see her starting to shift, you know. I'm pulling out. Let's get out of mercy right now. And let's just get into war, you know. Let's get into <laughs> agreeing with heaven. Yeah. Yeah. And do you know what? He came out of that coma. God healed his mind. And do you know what? Um, they went back in doing full-time ministry together. Yeah. Before he had a job and they were just doing part-time ministry. But then, after this, they did full-time ministry. Hallelujah. You know, who are you going to agree with? Amen. Now, yeah. we could have just, but, oh no, that's too bad. But you know what, we, you got to get into a higher law. Don't let your emotions just tell you what's going on. You've got to stop and get into a higher law. Say, Lord, what do you say about this? We're in a month of preparation, guys. We're getting ready to go into a new Hebraic year. It's not just Hebraic. It's, it's, it's God's calendar. We're getting ready to align with His calendar to a whole new year, a new season. This is an exciting time. Noah and his family were in this ark, and they're getting ready to go out. Now that, you know, part of it is like, oh, we get a new, a fresh start. I mean... But you're the only family on the earth <laughs> with a bunch of animals. Yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of scary. You don't know what to expect. We're going into a new year and a new season. We don't know what to expect, guys. So, but we've got to be prepared. Proverbs 30, 25. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. You know, they go into it like a hibernation. They, they eat during the summer and then they store up. If ants can do that, hallelujah, we can do it. We can Amen. be prepared. <laughs> Proverbs 31, I love the virtuous woman. And she was prepared. She sought out the wool and flax and she worked with willing hands to develop it. I remember I was praying one time. And I used to teach Proverbs 31 a lot. And so this one day I was kneeling by my couch. I can still picture me in my mind 
on the house on click a tat and I would kneel by the couch and, and, and I was praying and I said, Lord, help me seek out the wool and flax and work with willing hands to develop it. And I thought, hmm, what am I saying? Right. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit just rose that up. I said, really? I said, what, what does that mean, God? So I started be, uh, searching it out. And you know, the wool and the flax, flax is what is the beginning part before you make linen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the wool, you know, right off the sheet. <laughs> 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 now, I praise God I do not live in those days. Yes. Yes. I mean, you think we have it hard, girls? Yeah. They had to shear the sheep and get the wool and do all the stuff that they did and spin it and everything just to, just, you know, goodness sakes. So what this is saying is, it, she saw the potential. We've got to look through God's eyes. We've got to see the potential, not only in our lives, but in our family's lives. We have to seek out the wool and flax. It's not developed yet. It's not linen yet. It's not a wool garment yet. There's stuff going on in your family. And those of you that are married and your spouse, there's stuff going on in this world, in our neighborhood. We heard but you know what? We seek out the wool and flax. We seek out the potential in the situation. That dove went out of the ark went over the water looking for some land and returned back in. Then it went out and it got a piece of the of the olive branch to show where you know what was taking place. We have to seek the wool and flax in one another. And then how do we develop it? Well first of all we start praying for it. And we start pulling on it. We start complimenting people on the on the giftings that we see in them. We invite you and your church group to be a part of our live filming audience here at Anna's Gate. We film on Tuesday afternoons uh, at Anna's Gate, which is 6515 Clinton Highway. Um, we start worship at 345 and then immediately following we have the teaching with the live filming. So give us a call or contact us on the web so we can make reservations and make sure we have enough room for your group. We look forward to seeing you here. God bless you. Thank you for watching Redeeming the Time with Carol Marie. We'd like to encourage you to visit annasgate.org for more information. We pray that this message has been a blessing to you. There is an awakening taking place, and it's exploding around the body of Christ.